guys I am taking apart and rebuilding <clears throat> a Daisy uh, old classic 880 I was having problems in um, filling the chamber with or pressurizing the chamber with air so I have had to uh, take it all apart and, tr and change all the seals now I've already done the first initial part of taking it all apart so I'm right out in the middle of replacing the original uh, trigger valve. This kind of releases the pressure off of the chamber. So I'm taking the old one and putting a new one in. It sits right in here. And I've already changed the, the seals out here on the, on the chamber. <clears throat> um, it's a chamber pressurizing system here and what I'm gonna do is one once I'm done I'll, I'll put it back together by step and I'll show you you know how I did all this in the meantime I'm gonna get it all together I'm gonna put in the trigger check valve in there and then after that I'm gonna assemble it and then work on the piston pressurizing uh, stem here I gotta change this out it's all rotted out and I did buy the kit and so my battery died when it was in the middle of saying where I got the kit um, I ordered it on eBay <clears throat> there are some daisy power lines that are um, a more recent this is an older one so I had to look for a specific kit for it and um, there are there are out there and available. You just got to look around and make sure that you can find one at a reasonable price. But we've had this for a while. It actually belongs to my son, and they've been sitting in the closet. And I uh, came across it the other day, and I, was, I wanted to check it out. It still worked, and um, and it didn't. So I'm now rebuilding this to get it to work again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this pressure relief valve in here and it's going to go like so and you got to push down on it in order for it to sit I got a pair of And that's situated in there so now whenever you pull the trigger this will pull back and it'll release the air to shoot the pellet or the BB this gun does both um, and I lubricate it well so that part is on next part is the trigger there is a flat plate that sits here it's called a tension plate for the trigger um, you gotta make sure that you put that in and that it's situated right underneath the this uh, part of the bridge here. Alright, so now I, I put in the part where the trigger sits. There's a plate right here that sits underneath. Make sure it's well lubricated. And then there's a pin that holds that in place. And the next part of it will be the trigger. And the trigger is going to sit and, and what you're going to do is you're going to compress the spring in here and then put a pin right across this. This part here sits right into the hole of this plate that comes out through this side. <clears throat> so it is. Trigger is all mounted. Um, a little difficult trying to align these pins into its place, but once you got them on, you're good to go. Make sure that this this uh, flat plate is underneath this, not on top, but underneath it. Okay, guys, this is the final of it. Putting the cell covers on it. I have to tell you, I did have a, a hard time putting the uh, piston that pressurizes the cylinder. Um, 
I have to put a, I put a new gasket in there and uh, I have to I have to forewarn you guys that use a vise so you can get it on correctly. I think I bent it a little bit. It's still it's functional. But um <clears throat> definitely um do it the right way and, and don't bend it. The nice thing about this gun is that I'm I'm able to purchase most of the those parts are, are fairly available on eBay. Uh, the only thing that is not available anymore on this rifle are the side covers which I'm putting on in the butt. They uh, stopped producing that a while back but with that said you still can find people out there selling some of their parts of their old guns that they don't function no more. So we got it. There we go. And you can seriously put some pressure in that. And it's good. A little old, but it works.